The topic of mental health is always a tricky one to cover, since everyone's life experiences are unique. In this case, also adding on the layers and context of racism and gender stereotypes. And as we look at this, we wanted to pull in John Covington, a Muskegon native and filmmaker, to discuss his recent documentary that explores the lives of black men, the film aptly titled Black Man. He talks with a number of men in Muskegon County about what it's like to be an African-American male. Some say they want to change the narrative and stereotypes by sharing their stories. I'm John Covington, and this is Black Man. Because our images have been distorted. And so, so often, the truth is never told. This is the opportunity. Hopefully, it would enlighten them as to, if nothing else, I would say possibly the breaking of a stereotype that has been perpetrated on not only this country, but the entire world, not only Muskegon, but elsewhere, that um, black men in particular uh, are viewed with a negative eye, are viewed in a negative way, um, not, um, not a very positive, uplifting type of a, a manner in which we are looked at. And so hopefully we can help break some stereotypes with this. John Covington, the man behind an amazing documentary mm -hmm. on black men, appropriately titled <laughs> Black Men. Uh, we welcome you to Mutually Inclusive. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. So you had a conversation, like 50 hours of conversation or more. A little bit, a little, 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 little conversation. conversation yeah. With three dozen men ages mm -hmm. 21 to 91 mm -hmm. uh, years of age. And you said it in the open, raw uh, conversation, riveting. And I watched it with great interest, those conversations. And you talked about everything from race, uh, children, marriage, relationships, um, education, a whole lot more. And you talked with men from Muskegon, but as you said, this is black man, any town, USA, as we look at that. And when you speak of the life of black males in America, it's kind of hard not to touch on the mental health aspect. And that's what this show is about, mm -hmm. black male mental health. Um, and as we look at life and, and the things that come their way, what are your initial thoughts when you look back at your documentary? This is the first time many of these men have ever, ever released, talked about some of them were in tears, some of them you just were emotional, first time ever. And some of them were like 90 years old. Yeah, first time ever. As a matter of fact, there are men in the documentary who've been married for many, 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 many years, decades, and their wives had never seen them the way that they saw them in the documentary ever. So what prompted you to do that, to take a look at, as you call it, Black Man USA and, and the lives and the, because you pose questions in the front, like, you know, what about your relationships or who's your mm -hmm. favorite NBA player? I mean, you had, mm -hmm. you started that conversation. What yeah. made you do the documentary to begin with? Yeah, well, and, well, the Muskegon Museum of Art was doing a project called Sons, and it was the modern African-American male. And they wanted to do a two, three minute, five minute reel, a loop, mm -hmm. so that while people were waiting to enter the steel art exhibit, they would have something visual to look at. And they uh, got me involved to do it. Uh, we, I think, booked three days. And I was just gonna do this three minute loop just for people mm -hmm. to look at and just ask basic stuff. And so, so you could see some visuals before you go in to enter, you know, the art exhibit. And after the second interview in, I stopped the interview. This was the second guy. Uh, he left this makeshift studio that we had at the art, mu art museum. He walked out of the room and he was the second guy I think I interviewed and he was sobbing when he left. Mm -hmm. And I said, and I know him, and I just thought, whoa, 
what is happening here? And I went and told the director of the art museum at that time, Judy Hayner, I said, I think we've got more than a three minute loop. I think I could probably turn this into a documentary. That was that aha moment. It was just like that. And I said, wow. It was, I, I get chills now just thinking about how it was just so, it was just like, oh, I get it. I, oh, this is a lot more than what it started out as being, but it's becoming what it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And maybe had I known that it was gonna be that going into it, it may not have turned out the way that it did. So it's a documentary about black life, black male life, but it also allowed for, as you found out and discovered in talking with them after, black release hmm. that doesn't come through the therapist because most black men, it is documented. Documented. It is well documented that they will not seek mental health care because you're supposed to be strong, you're supposed to be the provider, you're supposed to not cry. All of those things came into play, right? Absolutely. And then also you have to add in to the distrust of mm -hmm. the system because of studies like the Tuskegee study Absolutely. and other things. And then you add that, don't cry, you're a big boy, mm -hmm. you don't cry, men don't cry, you know, the whole thing, you gotta be strong and you gotta deal with it, et cetera. You gotta pray it, yep, pray about it. Uh, all of those things that I too grew up being told most of those things. How is that playing out? Just the mere fact that they had an opportunity. Someone listened, someone asked. A lot of times, that's what happens too. People don't ask, so they hold it in. Absolutely. Right? Several of the men, I know of at least four of them that started therapy. Mm -hmm. After being a part of the documentary, after that experience, some of them started therapy before the documentary was even finished. Mm -hmm. They go, wow, the release that I felt from just talking to me, I'm not a professional therapist by any means, the release that they felt and the, the strength and how empowered they felt as a result of releasing. Mm -hmm. These are comments that they say immediately after they've seen the documentary. Well, I never thought about going to therapy, but I feel like I was in therapy watching this documentary. And so we decided to add the mental health component mm -hmm. to screenings. In various cities, we bring in a mental health expert to talk about all the things that have, they've been holding on to that they've not talked to people about, not released. Uh, it's been quite, quite remarkable. And you're making strides with that. How do you feel as, as the creator mm. of this documentary and you have opened doors and again, wanting to push it further to other <laughs> men outside of Muskegon but, and West Michigan, how do you feel? Humbled, honored, uh, shocked, this is a, a, this is something much bigger than I ever thought. I thought I was just doing a small documentary that would be local mm -hmm. to the Muskegon community. Maybe it would come to Grand Rapids. I had no idea. So I'm honored by the fact that I feel like I was chosen to to be a a, a conduit, a vessel to the to this. Okay, personal question time. What has it done for you and your mental health aspects? Because the stigmas, the racism, the disparities, all of those things impact people differently, but they're there for a general African-American male population, right? I mean, mm -hmm. systemic racism mm -hmm. is real. Those things mm -hmm. are there. You being one who allowed other people to speak as mm -hmm. you talked with them in this conversation, mm -hmm. you came up with the question, so it has to be like going through your head, like, I dealt with that, or yeah. But you weren't doing the talking, you were doing the questioning. Yeah. So. Flipping that script, now that I got you in that chair. No, <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> don't want to know, don't want to know. Well, release. Yeah. So what, what yeah. are you feeling? How did it help you? Or what is it encouraging you to do on, on any level there? It changed my life in terms of I'm way more conscious of my own issues, of my own idiosyncrasies, of my own weaknesses. I'm far more conscious than I had ever been. And there are things that I had just kind of taken and swept under the rug and mm -hmm. put behind the dresser uh, that I didn't know I was doing until I saw the documentary and I go, wow, that's me. Or, or wow, I can relate to that personally 
and that's my story. And so it's made me more conscious, more aware. And I am going to go to therapy. I've not started yet, mm -hmm. due primarily uh, to schedule, my schedule. Uh, but it's something that I said I was going to do in, mm -hmm. in 2024, that I, I, I too should uh, get some therapy. So it opened your door to know the need for that mm -hmm. and just having those conversations. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate you taking time. What a wonderful, again, documentary we're going to put up. Find information so people can view that. And we want to thank you for taking time to share thank all you. of that in your heart with us. We appreciate right. it. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.